Welcome to Grow Bio channel. In today's video, we're going to study about membrane transport. So, the membrane transport is most important function of plasma membrane. If you want to check out other function of plasma membrane, I will give my link in description below. Just check it out. Now, we can study about membrane transport. Introduction first, plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is a semi-permeable membrane. It will allow certain molecules such as uncharged particle and lipophilic molecule can pass through bilayer very easily whereas other molecule will pass through only channels, pores, pumps etc. So the plasma membrane will allow certain molecules to pass through the membrane such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, carbohydrate, protein, sugar, amino acids etc. Whereas in some cases it doesn't allow the larger molecules, ions, charged molecules etc. So it will be allowed by channels, pores, pumps etc. Okay. And the plasma membrane must eliminate the toxic waste through the membrane. And it must uptake nutrients from the surrounding. So for this process the membrane transport is very important. Now we can see about membrane transport. So, in membrane transport, there are two types of molecules, small molecules and larger molecules. The smaller molecule will be transported by two means, active transport, passive transport. In active transport, there are two types, primary active transport and secondary active transport. Next is passive transport. In passive transport, there are three types, simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, osmosis. And to transport larger molecule, biomembrane use bulk transport. So there are two types in bulk transport, exocytosis and endocytosis. Now we can check each one by one. First we gonna see passive transport. The molecule will move from higher concentration to lower concentration. So the molecule must pass through the semi-permeable membrane from high concentration to low concentration. So this movement is called as downhill movement. They use channel proteins, aquaporins and some use bilayer itself. So from that clip you can see oxygen and carbon dioxide uncharged molecule will pass through bilayer very easily and ions will pass through channels and water molecule will pass through aquaporins. Now we can see its types. First, diffusion, the simple diffusion. It uses second law of thermodynamics that is universe tends to be in disorder until equilibrium occurs. Okay. For example, in lungs, the alveolar region is there now. There, the uncharged gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide will move in and out respectively. So, it must uptake the oxygen and release the toxic carbon dioxide. Here, Another example is lipophilic molecule. Lipophilic molecule will pass through the bilayer very easily. So from that pictorial depiction we can see oxygen will come inside and carbon dioxide will move outside. This is simple diffusion. Next we can see facilitated diffusion. Facilitated means with the help of. So it uses some help such as channels, ports etc. So molecule will pass through channels, protein channels. Okay, the water molecule will move at the rate of 10 to the power 8 per second. The channel proteins will not be always opened. Okay, and it is selective too. So it moves only the selective molecules to move in and out. So mostly they are hydrophilic in nature. The hydrophilic molecules only will move from in to out or out to in by using the channels. Sodium pump will be always opened, whereas other pumps will be closed. Only on signal it will open. And the magnitude, that is rate of movement of molecules will be fast compared to the carrier proteins. The carrier proteins will be in active transport, we can see there. Okay. So next is gap junction. When two cells attach to one another, there will be a gap. So at that junction, there will be connections. This is a channel protein. By this connections, the electrical and dissolved molecule will pass through from one cell to another. So cell must be coordinated when it is present in organ. So for that purpose, the connections are there. 
but other molecule will not pass through the connection only the dissolved molecules and electrical signals will be passed through so these channels are voltage gated or ligand gated the voltage gated channel types are based on electrical charge okay whereas ligand gated is based on chemical that is voltage gated is based on electrical stimulus that is difference between two sides of a membrane it is highly selective whereas the ligand gated it is based on the chemical when chemical comes and bind the channel will open it is highly selective for example potassium calcium pump etc from that pictorial depiction you can see the some molecules will come inside by the channel but some other toxic chemical will move outside so next we going to see about osmosis so osmosis is molecules move from higher concentration based on the water okay to the lower concentration of water through the semi permeable membrane it is based on the water not the solute here there are three types isotonic when the cell is in isotonic solution that is same uh, type of concentration will be there so the cell will show no uh, movement in hypotonic solution that is when the cell is in low concentration solvent then in hypotonic solution the cell will burst because water moves from higher concentration in beaker to the lower concentration of water that is into the cell so at, at last it will break next is hypertonic solution in this the cell will shrink because the molecule will move from higher concentration of water to lower concentration of water so in hypertonic solution the solvent concentration will be low compared to the solute so the water will be present more in the inside of the cell so from inside of the cell all the molecule uh, water molecule will move outside at last the cell will shrink next we going to see about active transport here the molecule will move from lower concentration to higher concentration through the semi permeable membrane so it requires energy to transport from lower to higher it is based on the solute only okay so this type of transport is known as uphill movement so passive transport is downhill movement this is uphill movement so the molecule move against the concentration gradient and electrical potential so these are also called as coupled chemical reaction because when active transport occurs there will be also hydrolysis of atp so two reaction will occur so this is called as coupled chemical reaction they use carrier proteins which can be porters or ribosomally synthesized porters there are of two types carrier proteins or it can be ion pumps or it can be transporters so from that depiction you can see three sodium will get in and two calcium will get out this is the sodium calcium pump next we can see about types of active transport first primary active transport so in primary active transport the transporter will be active transporter will use atp so the protein will be atpase so they use atp in presence of atpase the atp will be break down into adp plus pi the phosphate will be used by the atpase protein that carrier protein and then they change the configuration to allow the molecules in or to pass the molecules how they are highly selective for example sodium pump potassium pump calcium pump etc next we going to see about secondary active transport the secondary active transporters use energy of electrochemical gradient established for second solute so to pass the molecule against the electrochemical gradient they use electrical and chemical signal to open and close the port they require electrochemical energy to change the configuration whereas in primary transport they require atp as their energy in secondary they use electrochemical energy for opening and closing okay the second solute pumped against the gradient and first solute cross the membrane as the exchange process here only one energy will be used that two for one solute the other one will move in the exchange process 
so these are also called antibody process or exchange diffusion next is facilitated diffusion facilitated diffusion will be present both in passive and active transport in passive transport they don't require any energy whereas in active transport they require energy because molecules will be moved from low to higher concentration so this is called active facilitated diffusion so next is as we already saw the active transport uses transporters atp and chemical or electrical based carriers so we already saw about atp and uh, chemical and electrical based carriers now we going to see about transporters there are many molecules that can be transported one at a time okay so it is based on three types symport antiport and uniport symport means two molecules will move in the same direction antiport means the molecule will move one from outside and one from inside to out next is uniport uniport is single molecule it can move bidirectionally either in or out okay the symport and antiport they are called as co transporters or active transporters because they use atp okay so here you can see pictorial depiction when the energy that is phosphate in there will be molecules transportation in uh, symport two molecule will get inside in antiport one will get in one will go out in uniport one will get in okay so here there will be one at a time transportation okay not two at the same time next is bulk transport bulk transport is movement of larger molecules in and out so here it happens only through vacuoles and vesicles the movement of polar molecules and other molecular waste toxic chemicals cell debris will be moved in bulk so now we can see about its types first we can see about exocytosis here the molecule will be moved outside the cell by using synaptic vesicle and vacuoles so here the vacuoles or synaptic vesicle will be punched off from the plasma membrane there will be a change in its structure of the cell so for example in brain in brain the molecules such as neurotransmitter for example acetylcholine will be moving from one synaptic no lobe to another in between there there will be a gap known as synapse so this is exocytosis it the neurotransmitter moves from one synaptic lobe of one cell to another cell okay so here what happens the synaptic uh, vesicle will contain the neurotransmitter it will get attached to the plasma membrane then there will be change in the plasma membrane uh, structure then the neurotransmitter will get out so from that uh, below picture you can see uh, there is pinch off from the cell so it can be a cell debris or a neurotransmitter or anything else okay another example is macrophage so macrophage will eat the cell the dead cells okay will eat the dead cell or uh, antigen the cell approaching from external environment as a part of immune system so there what happens it will digest the cell and then it exocytes the cell from in to out so next we can see about endocytosis the endocytosis is the cell forms invaginate structure and forms a vesicle or vacuole okay to get the cell and then it pinches off from cell membrane and get and get inside the cell okay in there it get lysed by using lysosome or some substance and then it will get digested so after that only exocytosis will occur there are three types of endocytosis phagocytosis pinocytosis and receptor mediated endocytosis phagocytosis is cell eating what the cell will eat the bacteria food and other cell that is dead cell or antigenic cell next is pinocytosis pinocytosis means cell drinking it drinks the extracellular fluid okay and next is receptor mediated endocytosis it means the endocytosis which is mediated by receptor it is very selective okay selective compound will be digested 
For example, macrophage eats dead cell and other antigenic cell from outside the body as a defense mechanism. Okay, and then it uh, inside it forms endolysosome and digest it. It is example of endocytosis and also after digestion it will exocytose the cell debris. Okay, it is example of exocytosis. Okay, now we can see what are the molecules that are involved in the membrane transport. So the answer is carbohydrates. It acts as the receptor. In receptor mediated, we can use the carbohydrates. Okay, the plasma membrane use carbohydrates. Sorry. So next is lipid. The lipid molecule that is lipophilic molecules. are also involved in membrane transport so they act as the bilayer okay next is proteins for example pumps ports channels carriers etc let me know if you have any doubts please comment in the comment section below subscribe and please press the bell button below thank you